So this might be one of the craziest dip buy opportunities. Go ahead and check this out. So this is CrowdStrike. A lot of you guys might, might have heard the news. You know, there's this like Microsoft outage. It's all sourced from CrowdStrike. Um, and it's not this security issue. Uh, the CEO went ahead and talked about that it was the lack of a software update that led to this outage. So there's there a bunch of different companies that use this uh, CrowdStrike software um, that are receiving the blue screen of death, right? Which pretty much means that they're not able to use their computer uh, and their software is not using, um, that's not working properly. This caused CrowdStrike, it's a publicly traded company, and this is what I love about the stock market is that when things like this happen, the market reacts. And we saw a huge gap down. Think about this. From 345, almost 346, all the way to lows of 270. We're talking about a 20% sell off if you were able to capitalize on this. But it's been recovering, right? From being down 21%, uh, it's now only down 9%. It looks like it's on its way back up as they continue to work getting all of those systems back into place. Now, my question or concern is, okay, well, what's the damage going to be? Obviously, this should have some form of a negative influence on the actual company, but this was just one of the biggest dip by opportunities. And the thing that I really want to focus on is the progress. A lot of people like to focus on indicators. And trust me, I have my indicators uh, for a reason as well. But there's no better indication of if you should buy or if you should sell based off of progress or lack of progress. And as long as we continue to show signs of progress on the upside, then great. It makes sense for all those that bought the dip on CrowdStrike to want to continue to hold to see if CrowdStrike can actually work its way back up to $340, $345 per share. I'm all for that. But if we begin to show signs of resistance, and we can't be surprised if that selling pressure comes back, as we're kind of seeing right now. We're seeing signs of a potential resistance right around 315, 316. If we get rejected, break below EMA, break below moving average, and that price action and progress follows on the downside, then think about this. We have huge downside potential. From where we're at right now, right around 313 uh, to the moving average, that's about 2.71%. Back down to previous support from market open, that's going to be about nearly a 7% move. And from pre-market lows, that's nearly a 13% percent move. There's a lot of money to be made, not just on the downside, but obviously on the upside if progress continues. Now that is the big question. That is where the risk is at, is do you see or think that CrowdStrike is going to make a full recovery? If so, possibly the idea of going long is something you can entertain. Or do you think that, okay, well, it's going to hit its resistance, lack progress on the upside, and then ultimately end up getting rejected due to obviously the influence uh, and effects that CrowdStrike has had on many different companies. So if that's the case, then maybe we could see some selling pressure. All I know is that there's going to be big opportunities on CrowdStrike. So I wanted to make sure that I talked about it. So you add it to your watch list. You don't need to trade this stock, especially if it's not something that meets your criteria. Area. I just think it's, again, a very relevant stock based off of recent and relevant news that is reacting. And we'll see if we get a quick gap up or a quick gap down based off of progress. And that's the main thing that I'm trying to focus on. The other thing that I want to bring up is Tesla. Tesla is absolutely dropping so hard as of right now. Lower highs, lower lows, a continuous descending pattern. Um, and I absolutely missed it. As you can see, I had one share. I ended up closing it, uh, but I missed this entire short position. Uh, I did end up shorting TQQQ, uh, which ended up selling off, but as a really, really common support range here, so I'm up about $1,600 there, but nothing too crazy. Again, you win some, you miss some, and that's essentially what happened today. I missed a really significant move on Tesla. I'm kind of bummed about it, but I'm waiting to see if we get progress on the downside to re-enter a potential short position, which again, I'll keep you guys up to date if you're part of my LPP team. Other than that, I hope and wish you guys an amazing Friday. Um, overall, NASDAQ market is showing signs of weakness. We're coming off one of the worst pullbacks uh, for 2024 for the NASDAQ and S&P 500. So understand that that's kind of the market sentiment, but even one bad week does not define a market crash, right? Market's still incredibly bullish for all of 2024. So that's something to kind of pay attention to is that, you know, yeah, maybe the day trades weren't ideally set up for the bulls this week, but kind of look forward to next week and see if you can set yourself up for a nice little swing trade. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in the LPP group chat. And again, if you're ready to join our LPP team, that's that second link in the description down below. And yes, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access, and you'll get to watch me trade live every single day. And we're running a huge sale right now. So if you want to sign up, there's no better time, especially before prices go up on September 1st. Make sure again, second link in the description down below, and I'll see you on Monday at Market Open for our live trading session. Take care, team.